Here's the 13 biggest differences between the Captain America Civil War movie and comic. In the comic book, which is titled just Civil War, a group of young superheroes called the New Warriors try to get famous by taking on a group of nasty bad guys, only for the villain Nitro to explode, instantly killing the team and 600 civilians. This triggers a political reaction that brings about the Superhero Registration Act. In the movie, it's more of a snowball effect of several superhero incidents that claim civilian lives, and now the Avengers are being held accountable. Both the comic and the movie feature a fight over superhero registration, but in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there are no real secret identities, so that pivotal element from the comic played no part. In the comic, there's also S.H.I.E.L.D.'s intention to hunt down unregistered superheroes, but seeing how there aren't many heroes in the MCU, the movie made it more about capturing the Winter Soldier. In the comic, it's S.H.I.E.L.D. that enforces the Superhero Registration Act, but in the MCU, S.H.I.E.L.D. was disbanded after the Hydra takeover in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. An underground version of S.H.I.E.L.D. still exists under the command of Agent Coulson on the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show, but they're in no position to be enforcing any superhero laws. The head of the movie, Sokovia Accords, is U.S. Secretary of State Thunderbolt Ross, who aims to enforce the new law with a U.N. committee. There are some who prefer the word vigilant. In the movie, the superhero civil war only ignites because the villainous Zemo executes an elaborate plan. But in the comic, there's actually no evil mastermind behind it all. It's an actual war of ideals between superheroes with no one pulling the strings. And while we're talking about Zemo, in the movie, he's an embittered Sokovian colonel. So he's barely recognizable to his comic version, who is a Hydra Nazi that fights with a sword and wears a pink sock for a mask. In the comic, Team Iron Man recruits a group of reformed supervillains called the Thunderbolts, led by Zemo. This was important because it showed just how far they had fallen to try and win the war. In the movie, the MCU's other villains are out of commission or dead, so this twist just wasn't possible. Hulk was absent in both versions, although for different reasons. In the comics, he was shot into space by the Illuminati because they thought he was too dangerous. Whereas in the MCU, he went off the grid by choice at the end of Avengers Age of Ultron. As for Thor, he wasn't in the movie, but in the comics he played a surprising role, sort of. He had been dead for a while, so it was a huge shock when he appeared in a flash of lightning during a pivotal battle and began fighting for Iron Man's side. Turns out it was not the real Thor, but an overly aggressive cyborg clone that Team Iron Man created so it looked like Thor was on their side. In the movie, no superheroes died, but in the comics, Goliath was killed when Cyborg Thor went out of control. This was mirrored somewhat in the movie when Vision accidentally shoots down War Machine, leaving Rhodey paralyzed. The other character that died in the comics was Captain America, albeit just after the events of Civil War. He was assassinated walking into court for his trial, which obviously didn't happen in the movie. The prison known as The Raft does exist in the comics, but it's just for supervillains. In the comics, they put the heroes in Prison 42, a massive jail in the Negative Zone, which is another dimension ruled by horrible insect monsters. In the movie, Captain America's team included Falcon, Ant-Man, Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch, and Winter Soldier. In the comics, he was joined by dozens of other heroes, although Scarlet Witch and Hawkeye were not a part of the conflict. As for Iron Man, his movie team consisted of Black Panther, Vision, Black Widow, War Machine, and Spider-Man. In the comics, Iron Man had tons of heroes and villains on his side, with Mr. Fantastic and Yellow Jacket helping him lead. However, Vision fought for Cap's side, and Black Panther stayed out of the conflict until Goliath was killed, which compelled him to stand with Cap against Iron Man. In the movie, Tony Stark recruits Spider-Man and gives him a new suit, enlisting him to help to stop Captain America at the big airport battle. In the comics, Spider-Man reveals his identity and registers in support of Iron Man, who gives him a seriously sweet Iron Spider costume. However, after seeing Goliath's death and the imprisonment of his fellow heroes, Spider-Man defects to Captain America's side. The comic book featured a true superhero war with hundreds of characters and massive battles. The movie, on the other hand, was more of a brawl than a war with a grand total of six heroes on each side. By the end, the movie wound up shelving the registration argument, instead focusing on the hunt for Zemo and the highly coincidental tragedy between Iron Man and the Winter Soldier, none of which was in the comic. 
When it was all said and done, Iron Man's side won, and Cap's side became fugitive, which is about the same as the comics. So the only big difference is that this movie ends on a positive note, because Cap is still out there fighting the good fight. Whereas in the comic, it's pretty depressing, because Scum of the Earth Iron Man won, the real heroes were forced into hiding, and Captain America died. For more on Civil War, check out our list of movie Easter eggs, and for all your Marvel needs, keep it here on IGN.